Hi everyone, it's Beth. And today I'd like to show you how to send ERC20 tokens out of my Ether wallet. So um, I'm going to be sending Lend Connect tokens today over to the Lend Connect platform. And um, it's really quite easy to do. So I just wanted to walk you through it and um, show you how nice and easy it is. So the first thing I did here, I just came over to my Ether wallet. I first stopped and I made sure that I was on the right page so that I'm not entering my information into a phishing site. So um, I do have, uh, sorry, I, I do go up here, I check and make sure that I have the HTTPS, that the security certificate is up here uh, correctly. So it is, that is wonderful. And um, now I just unlocked my wallet. Um, I am using a hardware wallet and my Ether wallet serves as both um, a platform where you can create a free ERC20 token wallet. Uh, you do hold your private key when you do generate a wallet with my Ether wallet. It also is um, the interface for a lot of hardware wallets that hold ERC20 tokens. So um, I am using this to um, access my Trezor. You can see it's the display address on the, on the Trezor. So um, that is what I'm, what I'm doing. So I really like that I can hold my coins in a hardware wallet and then um, use them here with my Ether wallet and that I don't have to download the entire blockchain to do it because the Ethereum blockchain is getting very, very large. Um, I have previously used um, the full Ethereum MIST wallet and it is a lot to always keep that wallet um, uh, in sync with the network and to make sure that you have enough room to hold that giant blockchain on your computer. So um, I do think that this is definitely an improvement over that for me. Now, certainly it is wonderful to help um, stabilize the network and do, you know, download that entire blockchain, help confirm that everything's correct, do your part to, you know, to help stabilize the blockchain. I like doing that too, but I mean, realistically, this is a much more mobile, much more practical way to um, transact with, with Ethereum so and ERC20 tokens. So I am definitely enjoying my experience with my hardware wallet and interfacing it over here with my Ether wallet. So today, um, now I am going to send my tokens from here over to Lend Connect. And it's really, it's quite easy. So um, the very first thing that I do that I did over here was I know that the gas for this transaction is recommended to be set at 60 way right now. And so I went ahead and I changed that first. Um, now I am going to just come over. I'm gonna get my Ethereum receive address from Lend Connect. So I will copy that, 0xb5, and then come over here and paste that in my box of my amount. No, that's not the right box. Let's try it in this box, the address box. Yeah. <laughs> So there we go, I pasted it in the address box um, and OX, B5, that's correct. So you always wanna make sure that the beginning and end of your um, transact of your receive address is correct because if you send things off to the wrong address, there's no one there who can help you with that. So um, just always double check. So now I am going to go to this dropdown menu, which lets me interface with the tokens that I am holding in my wallet and I am going to choose, I am going to choose, there we go, Lend Connect. So I just choose that from the drop down menu. It lets you choose, you know, from all the different types of coins that you are holding in the wallet. So, you know, it's, it's really nice. It's easy to, to, to navigate this. It's really a nice, um, a really nice interface. So again, I'm, I'm very much appreciating this as an improvement over the full experience, but okay, Lend Connect. So now I am going to send my entire balance because that's my purpose here today. I wanna to get my entire balance over to Lend Connect. I'm making a loan with Lend Connect. So um, I'm gonna send all my coins over there. So I'm gonna increase my gas limit. You can see it, it recalculated my gas to 51,718. I am going to increase that just to make sure that my transaction is going to make it over there and is appealing to be confirmed into the blockchain. So let's go ahead 
and I'm going to send that with 200,000. Again, I already increased the gas price to 60. So now the gas limit's 200,000 and I'm going to generate my transaction. Again, because I am using this um, with my Trezor as the interface, it's going to ask me to authenticate this, you know, to sign the transaction using my hardware wallet. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I have to check the check the address on my device. And that's correct. The amount is correct. That's a lot of gas for ETH. It is certainly a whole different world with ETH since CryptoKitties. Um, there is a real issue with the scalability of Ethereum. So um, the, the network has been very busy. Of course, it is ICO mania here also, which fell right kind of on the heels of CryptoKitties. So it's been really congested for quite some time and it has been much more expensive to send things around the Ethereum network. So in any case, my transaction is signed now. So I am gonna go ahead and authorize this transaction. Now here, this pops up and if you click verify transaction, it's going to take you over to etherscan.io, which is an Ethereum block explorer and is going to let you um, watch the status of your transaction so that you can see when it has been picked up by, by miners and has been confirmed into the blockchain. So um, sometimes it takes a moment for etherscan to pick up the transaction. Oftentimes when you first click that um, verify my transaction, it says it can't be found yet, but um, you know, it eventually loads. So, and, oh, yeah, I actually saw, I was just looking in the Telegram actually for Lend Connect, and they were saying that Etherscan was having some big issues. So let's um, copy this transaction ID and I will, let's go over to ETH Explorer and see if we can track this over here. This is another Ethereum block explorer called ETHplorer. And it is, I, I really like this site also. I really, really like this site for um, getting contract addresses when I am contributing to an ICO that I need to hold those coins in my ERC20 token wallet. Um, I think that the interface for finding the contract address is really, really nice for this. So it looks, however, like we might be having an issue with just the Ethereum network. I think it looks like a problem there. So in any case, I'm going to wait on my transaction. It is done. So that, that is all I can do at this point. Um, I, of course, would love to be showing it to you here on, a, on the Block Explorer because I like to see that confirmation. But um, I do trust that it is going out there. Again, I did see that people were having issues getting Etherscan to load. So um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. Um, but this is the this is how you do it for all of them. It's really, really easy. So um, if you haven't used my Ether wallet, I definitely would recommend that you go over, create a wallet, give it a try. Um, it is really, really nice to use, especially in conjunction with um, a site like ETHplorer, because you do have to um, find your contract addresses in order to add custom tokens into my Ether wallet, and you can definitely do that with ETH Explorer. So, okay, that's going to do it for me today, everyone. If you did like the video, then please leave a like. If you would like to see more from me, then please do subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to leave those in the comments section. And as always, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I will see you next time.